Helsinki, or properly pronounced Helsinki, is the gateway to Finland. You will most likely arrive and depart from the capital city. If you have plans to explore other areas of the country, I recommend spending a few days in Helsinki at either the beginning or the end of your vacation. Welcome to Sarah's Scuba and Travel Channel. In this video, I want to share some activities, restaurants, and events to add to your itinerary. Helsinki has a wonderful transportation system with a metro, trains, trams, buses, ferries, and taxis. If you are trying to get to the city center from the international airport, I recommend taking the metro. The metro is located multiple stories down, so follow the signs and you will find yourself in the metro tunnel. If you know you are going to rely on public transportation throughout your stay, you can purchase a multi-day HSL card. Helsinki Regional Transport HSL, is Helsinki's public transport operator. Purchasing this card will allow you access to all forms of public transportation. If you are just trying to get to the city center, then you can purchase a single ABC zone ticket. This will take you to the main train station and Helsinki city center. Once you check into your accommodations and drop your bags, you may be hungry and looking for some food options. There are two restaurants near the train station that I recommend for grabbing a meal. The first is the Maya Bar and Grill, which offers Latin and American cuisine. The chicken fajitas and the cabana paella were both very good. Next to the Maya Bar and Grill, you will find Mount Everest, which offers wonderful Nepalese cuisine and is very popular at lunchtime. My husband and I both got different meals and everything was so good. While we were enjoying our lunch, I noticed open seats did not remain vacant for long as multiple groups of people came and went, enjoying the wonderful food. If you are looking for a little snack, you will find Cafe Phaser locations throughout the city. This is a great place to grab a coffee or tea as well as a pastry or sandwich. We frequented Cafe Fraser for breakfast and late afternoon snacks. One tradition that I really appreciated in Finland was the serving of traditional Finnish chocolates with coffee and tea. It is a nice little sweet addition to your meal or snack. Some restaurants gave these chocolates at the end of the meal as well with the check. One of the first activities I recommend in Helsinki is to book a city tour with a city planner. I've put a link to the tour guide that I used in the description below. I highly recommend booking a tour with Emic. This is a three hour walking tour that departs from a location within the city center. He will share information on the history of Finland as well as present day government practices, culture, and everyday life. You can explore the city on your own, but you don't get this kind of insight and perspective when walking around on your own. I think it is a great way to get your bearings of the city as well as understand the culture, history, and society. Our first stop was Senate Square, where you will learn about the long history of the battles between Sweden and Russia, with Finland caught in the middle. The square was built by Russia to send a message to Sweden that they were in charge. If you visit during the month of December, you will be able to experience the Christmas market later in your visit as well. More to come on the Christmas market. In the Senate Square, you will find the Helsinki Cathedral, which is a Lutheran church with an Orthodox look due to the Orthodox Russian influence. This is the next stop in your walking tour. If you are present 10 minutes before the hour, you may get to hear the church bells. This timing was used as a 10 minute warning to help people get to church on time. As you make your way to the entrance, be careful, the steps are steep. Highlights inside the church are the altar, organ, statues of reformers like Martin Luther, and the first completed translation of the Bible into Finnish. Next to the cathedral is the University of Helsinki. As a U.S. citizen, it was amazing to hear that education is free from kindergarten through a PhD, and anyone can go to school for free in Finland, all the way through your doctorate. In addition, kids are legally required to spend one day a week out of school every week. Their teachers take them to museums, the theater, nature adventures, and more. Finland has one of the best educational systems in the world, and it's clear to see why. The next stop is the old Finnish house of nobility, which is now a museum. You will see eight crests of nobility with the Finnish crest along the top of the building. Then a walk near the shore across the lock bridge and past the Finnish Orthodox church. Remember, this is a walking tour. So if you want to go inside any of these stops and spend more time, you can always do so later. Just check online the days and times the sites are open. 
Otherwise, you will be like me and end up at the Orthodox Church on a day when it is closed. Rookie mistake. The Orthodox Church follows the Lutheran calendar and services are delivered in Finnish. Next, you will continue along the water past the Sky Wheel and Alice Sea Pool, where you may see people running through the cold in swimsuits or taking a dip in the frigid waters. You can join if you would like. On the opposite side of the street, you will see a presidential palace, Supreme Court, and a Swedish embassy with a Russian Alexandria statue in the front, symbolic of the constant fighting between the two countries. This area is the Market Square. There is a market year-round with the largest market in the summer. Vendors sell a variety of different items. In the winter, vendors were selling winter accessories, Christmas trees, and finished souvenirs. Next, you will head past the old sailboat, which is actually a restaurant, and enter the old market hall. This is a great opportunity to use the restroom and purchase a snack. There are stalls selling all kinds of different food items. Ask your guide for recommendations to taste some of the local fare. One recommendation our guide, Emmett, gave us was to try the Runeberg cake. Runeberg wrote the national anthem of Finland, and his wife would make this cake for his birthday in February. It used to only be sold in February as a tribute, however, as the popularity rose, it is now sold by some bakeries year-round. The cake is a rum and almond cake with preserves on top. The preserved flavor can vary. You will see a variety of stalls selling fish, caviar, cheese, and dehydrated game like bear and reindeer. This could be a great place to return to purchase a meal or create your own buffet of options. From here, you will take a stroll through Espinodi, which is a long, narrow park that has a variety of light sculptures in the winter and could be a great place to have a picnic with your food from the old market hall in the summer. There is a beautiful restaurant with a greenhouse appearance called Capelli in this park as well. In the park, you will find a statue of Rudenberg. Next, you will head over to the train station. Along the way, you may notice the sidewalks are clear of snow in the winter. This is because the city runs hot water under these sidewalks to keep them from freezing. If sidewalks do not have hot water pipes running underneath them, the city will throw pebbles on the sidewalks. This helps with traction to prevent ice and people slipping. They do not use salt or chemicals since it will eventually flow to somewhere else, and they try to preserve their natural resources. At the train station, we were able to witness a protest. Protests are quite common in Finland. These individuals were protesting cuts to social services. Our last day in Helsinki, all of the transportation workers went on strike. There was no public transportation. Luckily, the strikes were highly advertised in advance and we were able to plan accordingly. However, it is something to be aware of while traveling. The tour through the train station highlights the architecture and design of Elial Sorzen. Finally, the last stop is a Helsinki library. There are 41 libraries in Helsinki, each targeting populations within the corresponding community whether it is a class for the elderly, daycare programs, and more. There are community groups, a makerspace, meeting rooms, recording studios, gaming rooms, art spaces, cinemas, and more. Patrons can check out anything from books to tools to musical instruments. If you need a drill and don't have one, instead of going to the hardware store and purchasing one, you can go to the library and check one out. It was a refreshing approach to community resources and support. If you need to have a business meeting, you don't have to rent an office space. You can reserve a meeting room at the library. If your walking tour does not include the library, I highly encourage you to take a moment to appreciate the architecture inside and out and do a walkthrough of the space on your own. I have to say, it was one of my favorite stops. When your tour is over, you may want to make a stop at the Helsinki sign as it is close to the library. From here, if there are any stops you would like to return to, you can do so or plan it for another day. If you are visiting during December, there are a few activities I would like to highlight. First, make sure you stop at Stockman, which is the largest department store in Helsinki. They have window displays for the season. From here, you can enjoy the lights of the city center, as well as displays in the Esplanade. Remember, it gets dark by 3.30 or 4 p.m. this time of year, so you do not have to wait until late to appreciate the lights. Eventually, make your way back to Senate Square and enjoy the Christmas market. The market is open from December 1st to the 22nd, starting at 11 a.m. each day. There is a large lighted Christmas tree in the middle. Here you can find vendors selling a variety of items from winter apparel to sweets to ornaments to metalwork, beauty products, candles, and more. 
There are a variety of food items, including meats, cheeses, honey, chocolate, pastries, candies, and more. I purchased some pastries and homemade chocolate. They were very tasty. There is a carousel for kids to enjoy. This is also a great time to get views of the cathedral illuminated at night. Now, if you are planning to be in Helsinki on December 13th, this is Lucia Day, where a young girl is chosen to represent St. Lucia. Girls are nominated by their schools, and in the evening, the selected winner is crowned inside the cathedral. People line the steps to watch the winner leave the church, along with the runners-up, and a parade through the city entails. The girl that is crowned St. Lucia will continue to provide hope and cheer through community service and visits to hospitals, orphanages, daycares, and nursing homes throughout the winter. It is a beautiful tradition to experience if you are in the city. Get there early and find a spot on the steps or at the bottom of the stairs by the Christmas tree in Senate Square. Many school children participate in the festivities and there are all kinds of performers in the parade. This is a major televised event, so expect news coverage of the processional. We were not able to attend the ceremony. However, the woman next to me was watching the service on her phone. So if interested, you may be able to watch the live stream of the ceremony before the young ladies exit the church. The ceremony involved multiple songs being sung by the girls. When visiting the Senate Square in the evening, I encourage you to make reservations in advance for Restaurant Cervante, which is located across the street from Senate Square. They offer traditional Finnish food. We had the Arctic char and beef dishes, which were very good. Another stop I recommend as you make your way around the city includes a visit to St. John Cathedral. It is beautiful inside and out. It is a Lutheran church and it is the largest stone church in Finland based on seating capacity. Originally, it seated 3,000 people. Since pews have been removed, it now seats 2,200. Make sure you take a few moments to walk through the church admiring the architecture, beautiful altar, religious artwork, stained glass window panels, and the large organ. Along the way to or from the church, you can stop the National Memorial for the Winter War from 1939 to 1940. This war drew Finland into World War II after the Soviet Union tried to attack and conquer Finland. If you look inside the glass of the memorial, you can see pictures depicting the history and timeline of the war. Explanations of each set are available online using the QR code on the plaque. If you are interested in a small garden, you can visit the Helsinki Winter Gardens. This site is located near the Olympic Village, which you will need to take a public transportation or taxi rideshare. Please keep in mind that rideshares have a taxi sign on top. This was a surprise when I ordered an Uber and a taxi appeared. The gardens are free to visit and are open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day except Friday. In December, they were decorated for Christmas. The gardens contain a variety of plants from different ecosystems as well as a waterfall. This is a very peaceful space to eat your lunch, read a book, or just stroll through and enjoy the space. In December, you will find poinsettia, azalea, and belladoni lily in bloom. There is a garden closer to the city center, Kaisaniemi Botanic Gardens. However, they were closed for renovation in December 2023. But the gardens are located near the train station and through a nice little park pathway. The last attraction I want to highlight is Suomenlinna. Suomenlinna is an island with rich history. In order to access the island, you will need to take a ferry by the Market Square. This ferry is operated by Helsinki Regional Transport, HSL. If you have a pass, you can use it for the ferry. If not, I recommend buying a single pass as it is cheaper than buying the day pass. The single pass is good for one ride on the ferry, so you will need to purchase another single pass on the Zumanlina to return to Helsinki. The ferry ride is approximately 20 minutes and will definitely be chilly, so dress appropriately. However, it offers beautiful views of the city and shoreline along the way. I recommend trying to catch one of the early morning ferries so that you have plenty of time to enjoy your day on the island. You will want as much time as possible to explore. Upon exiting the boat, make sure you are aware when the last ferry leaves to go back to Helsinki for the day. That way you can make decisions as to what you really want to see and how much time you have at each location. Next, you may want to stop at the visitor center or scan the QR code on the welcome sign to access the map of the island. The first stop I recommend is the church. This was originally the Russian Orthodox Church. However, when Finland took over control of the island, it was converted to a Lutheran church. 
The steeple actually still operates as a lighthouse for air and sea traffic. Next, make your way down the main road towards the bridge. Before the bridge, you will see the Suomenlinni Museum on your left. If you have some time, I encourage you to stop in and enjoy this small museum. There is an entrance fee, however, if you have plans to visit multiple museums on the island and throughout Helsinki, you may find it cheaper to purchase the museum card, which gives you free entrance to 370 museums in Finland for a year. Entrance is also free with the Helsinki card. For more information on these cards, please see the links in the video description below. The Suomenlinni Museum offers historical displays of the many roles the island has served for over 270 years. The exhibit also features utensils, tools, weapons, and ammunition that have been found in the excavations and attics of the island. The museum offers a gift shop if you would like to do some shopping. If you are hungry and looking for a snack or lunch, there is a cafe in the museum as well. The next stop I recommend is on the other side of the bridge as you walk through the opening in the fortress. You will see catacombs that you can walk through. This fortress was originally built by Sweden and is a World Heritage UNESCO site. Next, make your way into the Great Courtyard, which served as the main square. You can find the fortress's founder's grave in the courtyard as well. Then make your way to the Dry Docks. This is one of Europe's oldest operating dry docks. This is where the Swedish naval fleet was built in the 1760s. Today it is used to restore old sailboats. Then head towards Kustem Mieka, which allows you to get up close with Suomalini's original Beston and the late 19th century Russian defense line. There are a variety of cannons along this walk. As you make your way around the defense line, you will have beautiful views of the ocean. The King's Gate was not accessible during our visit, but this would be my recommended last stop when visiting the island. Most likely it is time to make your way back to the ferry dock, especially if you are visiting in the winter. Get a spot in the front of the boat and enjoy the ride back to Helsinki as you watch the city come into view. In the late afternoon or evening in the winter, it is a beautiful sight with all of the city lights lit up and twinkling in the horizon. I was hesitant to make the journey in December, not knowing if it was worth it with all of the snow, shorter days, and many sites closed. Emmick, our walking tour guide, told me that if we do nothing else while we are in Helsinki, to please go to the island. I am so glad I listened to him. I really enjoyed this island and felt like we could have spent much more time easily. Like I said in the beginning, Helsinki is a great starting city to exploring this area of the globe. Some suggestions I have from Helsinki are to take the ferry to Tallinn, Estonia for the day or the next stop in your adventure. You can also travel to other regions of Finland like Rovianemi, which was our next stop. However, we were taking an overnight train and were required to check out of our accommodations early the morning of. Therefore, we stored our luggage at the train station. Downstairs, they have lockers of various sizes to store bags and different intervals of time that can be purchased. One extra large locker was able to fit two large suitcases, a carry-on roller bag, and two backpacks. We didn't travel light. You receive a ticket with a barcode which can be scanned to access your locker and retrieve your belongings. It is a really nice setup that was not too expensive. Wherever you head next, I hope you have an amazing adventure. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. If you would like to help support future productions, please donate using the super thanks button or buying me a snack using the link in the description below. Please join the Facebook group and follow me on Instagram for more content.